have 66 animals now? Apparently. <laughs> While we were working so good together, she got into the conditioner. <laughs> Did he say 66 animals? Yeah. She's trying to be YouTube controversial yeah, here. Give your channel a little excitement. Yes. <laughs> we have a chicken that broke her leg. You little guys are loud. Yes, you are. Axel, Brick. We have cubes of it. Oh, you gonna try the onions? What do you think? Good morning, guys. A big, exciting day here. I got a call this morning and we have 26 new baby chickies. Oh, you guys are so cute. These are also a bre breast chickens. Although I don't know that they call them American breasts because I got a box of mixed, which can be black, can be blue, can be like striped, can be white, the American ones like we have that are red, white, and blue. I don't know, maybe they're all American breasts. But these guys, oops, sorry. <laughs> these guys were a little cheaper and I'm having so much trouble telling my white ones apart. So I wanted to get this kind. You want tea? Oh, sure. So Destiny and I went and picked them up this morning. Thanks for your help. They're so cute, so fun. We gotta get them under heat lamp. So we are doing dual purpose chickens. Our first batch, we got 25 chickens, two died. They gave you an extra one, so we had 24. We're using them for meat and eggs. They're just about the age, I think actually, I thought it was a couple days ago that they were old enough to be processed, but it's actually just in a few more days, which worked out good because I hadn't ordered the processing equipment yet, that's starting to come in. Uh, so we'll do our first batch of roosters. <laughs> That'll be something that I won't film, but I'll probably film that day. I'm nervous about it, Solo's nervous about it, and it's something that our kids, a lot of them don't wanna see it, which is fine, I'm not gonna make them. It's just something that we feel to do and to learn. So we're gonna do that soon. When you do dual purpose, they recommend that you get like 50 birds and that didn't even mention like a big family because you have to have enough that you're like re reproducing your own and making me. 50 birds seemed extremely overwhelming to me and never having a chicken before in my life. And so we got 25 in the spring. And like I said, they're 16 weeks old about right now. And so they are at the time, they should start laying eggs soon. They are ready to be processed or like fully grown. And so we're just gonna process all but a couple roosters so that they can fertilize, the leftover, the, the rest of them can fertilize some eggs. Hopefully we get a lot of eggs from our hens and our hens start sitting on eggs, at least by spring. It became obvious to us about a month ago that we really do need more than this to get a flock going. So we went ahead and put in another order for roosters while it's still warm, I mean roosters for chicks, while it's still warm, so we got 25 more. So now we are at 50. Hopefully they'll be, you know, pretty big by the time it starts really getting cold around here. That's my hope. I am very comfortable with the chickens that we have and taking care of them. It is not as hard as I thought. It's just something you have to check in every morning, check in every evening with them, which doesn't bother me at all. I would love to be home all the time, but we also have systems set up for when we're not home, so that's been working out good. Yeah, it's all going really well. I think, I don't, I'm not nervous about getting these 25 chicks now, and we actually don't have to keep them in our garage, or house, like we did before. They can be out. We have a little coop um, saved just for them, although we do have a chicken with a broken leg in there right now, so hopefully they don't stress her out. Just found her one morning with a broken leg. So we have her just s set aside in a place by herself, leg wrapped, not sure if I'm going to um, have her heal. It could take weeks to months from what I've read or when we're processing, we may just process her because I don't want her to just live miserably and in pain and she does seem kind of miserable. So we keep giving her food and water and keeping the others away from her so they don't hurt her. Anyway, that's a whole chicken saga. <laughs> we're excited to have these new babies and I hope they grow fast, but it is fun, it's fun. I hope this American breast, they're supposed to be like the best chicken meat in the world. Um, we'll find out soon, I guess. But I really do hope they get broody or whatever. I hope they sit, whatever it's called when they sit on eggs. <laughs> I know, I don't know if broody is when they just wanna sit and they don't hatch eggs or if it is when they actually hatch eggs too. But I hope, I hope they want to hatch out their own eggs. If not, we do have an incubator or maybe we can get a a kind of chicken that loves to be broody like that <laughs> to hatch out eggs for us. Cause that would be nice if we had some good mamas 
and we didn't have to keep ordering. That's the goal, to not have to keep ordering chicks. I had to run to Tractor Supply because I have chicken crumbles coming in my next Azure Standard order, but these chicks showed up like a week or two early. Fun times. Belle's gonna run the show for me for a minute because I have a Zoom meeting with someone in Kenya and someone here in Lincoln, connecting someone in Lincoln who works with foster care kids with someone with our family in Kenya who's running KKV and they're gonna talk. And you're just there because you're like the middleman? I'm the middleman. I'm super interested in the talk, but also I will bow out because I'm not I'm not trying to be up up and making it more complicated for them. So I shouldn't be long. Belle, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> On a jet plane. No, actually. No, actually just cars. <laughs> uh, I'm driving back with Nana to Florida, so. Yeah. My parents drove here like five or six six weeks ago. And they usually don't drive their car here. But my dad did not want to drive again. Yeah. But Belle offered so to drive to, with like, my mom. So they flew to Alaska and my grandpa just flew right back yep. to Florida and then but my grandpa had to get from here. So you're going to drive over there. You're taking like a three or four day drive, right? Out of it? Just like a two day. Aren't you staying two nights no, on two the road? No, two nights. Yeah, so three days. Sorry. Three day drive. Mm -hmm. You're staying with family on the way. Cousins. Cousins, you don't know that well. I my cousins. Seen in a while. Children. <laughs> My cousin's children, which would be your second cousins, first cousins once removed, something like that. One yeah. of those. One of those. We'll miss her. How long are you gonna be gone, Val? Like ten days? A week. Just a week? Uh, You'll a fly week home days. in a week. I'll only miss one. The only thing I remember is I'll only miss one Sunday, but I'll miss two Wednesdays. Uh, church. That's how I count time. <laughs> so we have 66 animals now. Apparently. <laughs> They're cute, right? No. They're so cute. We gotta get them set up. They're all the same color, exactly. Aren't they? Yeah, and these are supposed to be the multicolored ones, so we'll see if they change. Kiss your grandmother. <laughs> okay, I'm getting her a starter here. It's kind of messy because I've been busy this morning. That she, this is the over 100 year old starter. We call it Anna. She was born before 1920. And it, I called my cousin, yeah. who got it, like it from another cousin, and I asked that cousin, you don't need this much, but I'm just pouring you a bunch. Oh. I asked okay. that cousin where it's from, and she got it from her best friend's grandmother in Canada. So it's a Canadian 100-year-old <laughs> starter. Mm -hmm. It's Canadian? I don't know if I want Canadian. Do I want Canadian? Yes, you do. We love Canada. <laughs> She's trying to be YouTube controversial yeah, here. Right. <laughs> Your channel a little excitement. Yes. Hi. Am I getting it? Yes. Can I get it? Yes. Can I get it? Yes. <laughs> He's like, mm, if you must. I love this my teenage boys. They hate it. <laughs> Okay, she remembered to grab her driver's license. Oh, I had my driver's license. oh okay. <laughs> Nessa will miss you. This morning is one of those situations. I woke up at 6:30 with an unexpected call from the post office. Even though I was tracking it, it did not show that they were here yet. Picked up the chicks, had an online meeting I almost forgot about for an hour and a half. My mom's leaving, everything is just chaos. So I just called everybody together, we're all working, trying to whip this place into shape so we can take care of the chicks, they're the priority. At this point we are like, what's the biggest priority? Sometimes you just have to do the next right thing. Or the next thing, whether it's right or not. But I know this is the next right thing, so. All right, keep going. You're doing the table. Micah's doing the counters. Noelle's rinsing dishes. Hope is emptying the dishwasher. Tori's playing. She usually does the floor because she's playing with the baby for me and got her dressed. Destiny is supposed to be cleaning that room. And Seth should have a job, but he doesn't. And you, you little guys are loud. Yes, you are. We keep giving him food and water. Are you Carrie? Are you baby Grace? Oh, baby Grace. Oh, you want it off now? Already it's looking much, much better in here. I just cleaned all the big dishes. That's my zone right now. And the laundry. 
Bell zone. What's bell zone? Oh, it's the basement bathroom. So I might have to do oh. that for a while too. No, the, the way we just make sure the boys pick up their stuff and I pick up my stuff. Hey, good I, idea. I, it's not me. It's um, we'll just <laughs> oh boy. Wow, those guineas are loud. My meeting this morning was so good. If you don't know, my family runs a children's home in Kenya. And my grandma, actually, my grandparents started it quite a few years ago now because my grandpa's been in heaven for a while. And my grandma's 96, so they started it, I think, in their 70s, I want to say. My aunt and uncle ran it for a while. Now my cousin and her husband, so Trey and Lydia run it. They're set up like, um, it's kind of an institution, but it's not. So they have different apartments on their property. We've done videos about it before, but they have parents in different apartments so the kids can grow up in a family-like situation. But Kenya is changing. They don't want any more institutions. They're wanting to move to foster care, which has not been a big uh, thing in Kenya. Whew. Yeah. That bag of food got heavy. <laughs> you brought me flowers? Thank yeah. you. They're wanting to move into foster care, the government. So. It's unclear what that will mean for King's Kids Village, which is our family's home. For kids, they have all age kids. So a lot of the apartments have like 10 kids, like our size family with the house parents, but they grew up with kids all different ages. And um, it's been very helpful because they are able to take like medical diagnosis, kids with medical diagnosis that other people won't take. They take sibling groups. They just take who, what the orphanages won't take a lot of times, whenever they can. I think it's laying an egg. Ooh, we'll check it out. So anyway, we were able to connect with them with a good friend of ours who goes to our church who has worked in the foster care system um, in this state and other states for years and years and years. And some of the organizations she's worked for have also had the same type situation like KKV does with apartment buildings. So it was good to help them or make that connection. She was able to help them a lot um, as they're working through transitions that they're not even quite sure how it's going to look so it was a really good phone call and i was thankful to get to be a part of it i love anytime i can be a part of anything about kkv it was good to see my cousins too trey and lydia trey was on this video not that long ago because he was staying with us for a little bit and we miss him we talk about him all the time like oh man we need to fix this thing in our chicken coop i wish trey was here <laughs> to tell us what to do our broken chicken is it a hen or is it a rooster i'm not even sure I thought it was a hen. Now has another chicken that's joined her. Why is it so hard to tell if they're hens or roosters? It should not be this hard to tell. I don't think the rooster would be sitting on an egg, so. And the hen has a broken leg. This is the coop we're gonna put them in. We gotta hang that light. We're gonna get some fresh wood chips in here, although they're pretty fresh, actually. Oh, one of them standing. Oh yeah, we need to get him out of here. I think that's a him. All right, Eli filled up their water. He's bringing it down. What'd you tell him? <laughs> he got it nice. <laughs> she goes, did you know we just got a knife to cut off your head? <laughs> oh boy. They wouldn't even look at that knife box after I told them what that knife was for. Okay, we're refilling her water and food. Tori's coming. Tori's coming with the chicks? Mm -hmm. I hope it works out for her to be in here with the chicks. I don't want them to stress her out. Even though we might process her in a few days to put her out of her misery, I want her to have a happy life until... She doesn't have a life. Okay. Guys, if you're tempted to tell me that this is inhumane, that we're gonna process our chickens. You're not only allowed to say that if you're vegan, I think. <laughs> if you eat Chick-fil-A, don't tell us that because we're giving our chickens very, very, very happy lives. We're take care, taking care of them as best we can. They are so happy they are around this property all the time, free ranging. I can tell they have really happy lives and the chicken you're getting from the grocery store does not have such happy lives. I think it's very humane, it's the most humane and it makes us much more appreciative of the food we're eating, so. All right. Yeah, they are. Let's go, let's take them in. Where are we putting them? We're putting them in the North Coop. North Coop, yeah. So remember, we gotta dip their little beaks in the water so they know where their water is. Oh, I, di I didn't get their food yet. Let me grab that. Nana just called to see what audiobook they should be listening to that's good. They're gonna have fun. Ranger's Apprentice. <laughs> Boy, they won't like out. that, but it's a great book. Okay, Boy, did you guys dip out. all their beaks in both already? I didn't do them both. I only did one. What? No, I'm I'm saying in the water and the food. Oh, look at that uh, one. Found that one. Oh, I think we all know where the food is. We didn't. Oh, they just figured out the food. Yeah. So we have some chicken wire there, which I know is not good enough. Like raccoons can peel through chicken wire, so Solo's gonna put some else in that window, and then we'll keep this door closed. 
So the other chickens don't get to them. You want bread? Yeah, go on inside and check. All right, we got their light, their food, their water. The only thing I was concerned about is I hope they don't drown in her water. Which is not too much. Out, but you need to point out where their water is. But we didn't point out that it's over here too. So um, hopefully they stay on their side and leave her alone. Yeah, the lady at the post office, her name is Deb, and she asked us to name one after her. <laughs> What's her name? Debbie, I think. Debbie. Yeah. Okay. The one drinking the water right now is Debbie. Okay. They sent an extra, so we have 26. One thing I love about the farm life is all the new life that's around all the time. That is very fun because I love some babies. Okay, let's go. You can put can him, him or her down. Can I bring her? No, yeah. but we'll come play with them later. Let's go do some school. I got a list going on my fridge again today because I've got too much in my brain and not one thing I did this morning was even on that list. Great. Just great. You want to eat again? Eat. What? <laughs> Show me what you drew. Hold it up. What? That's so good. I love it. Those are cute faces. We're reading this right now. We'll read this a little. This is my Bible. We'll read a little. This is some poems. Of course it didn't really, but that's how it felt. Soon it became obvious that I could only do three or four lawns a day if I worked from just before dawn to just after dark. While we were working so good together, she got into the conditioner. <laughs> Oh, it's goopy. Ooh, Desi well, needs this. Let, well, me, let me give it to Destiny. Well, oh, everyone, 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 everyone. oh, yeah. Pete's mm -hmm. got a whole hair refresh this morning. <laughs> I guess it's not even morning anymore. Did you get your hair washed impromptu? Ooh, got some oh, stuff on your nose. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What is that? Oh, that's too small. I'll take that one. So we pulled out some magnets to keep them busy while the bigger ones are doing school. We just had a snack lunch. This is pieces. We had crackers and nuts and dried mango. Some of these for those who wanted it. A few other things they had choices of. Wednesday's a snack lunch. So helps us not have to think hard when it comes time for lunch. What's for lunch? Look at the calendar. Oh, it's snacks. <laughs> We do snack lunch once a week. Breakfast on Wednesdays is supposed to be eggs, but we are not producing quite enough because they're just getting eaten when they come in the house. We're like getting three or four, sometimes two a day. It's not enough to have eggs for breakfast Wednesday morning because we can't seem to save them up. If everybody wasn't eating them, we could, but soon we'll have plenty. All right, Micah is gonna run the show here with Tori's help. I just put the baby in bed. You guys gonna finish your school? I don't want oh. to, but okay. <laughs> I did it. Because I only had four worksheets and I do four Call me if you have days. any problems at all. Sounds good. Or dad if I don't answer. I'm crawling at four miles an hour down my driveway, but I was just thinking, yes, Micah was right. We have 66, did he say 66 animals? Yeah. We, four months ago, maybe five months ago, we had one animal. This has escalated very quickly. <laughs> 66. Three kittens, one dog, five guineas, because we lost one the other day. Just disappeared. A lot of chickens and seven ducks. That makes me sweat. So I did the dentist's office, and then Luca, I don't remember if I told you, but Luca worked, I think, from 5.45 this morning, and he t ended up picking up another shift, so he's working also for whatever that morning shift was, then he worked from f noon to five, so a double shift. So. He needed me to bring my Sam's Club card by his work. He was at a, the drive-thru for his second shift anyway. And I, uh, he needed my Sam's Club card so he could get, get uh, so he could get gas where it's cheaper. And he uses his own card to pay for the gas. But our kids pay for their own gas. Anyway, he's like, if you come bring me that Sam's Club card, I'll give you my shift drink. He probably got two today because he worked two shifts. <laughs> so he gave me one of them. He works at New Day, coffees and smoothies. And he made up a smoothie for me. I'm like, I love peanut butter and I don't care what else. And he, so he made one that tastes like a, more like a milkshake. <laughs> but it had peanut butter, berries. I'm not sure what else, but it was very, very good. I hope he remembers so he can make it again. <laughs> it's fun to have teenagers. I should have filmed when I got it, but I was too busy trying to embarrass him. 
He's on to me these days. He does not embarrass easily anymore like he used to. <laughs> Having teenagers is so much fun. I've done next to nothing today. The pizza dough that I was gonna make, the bread dough I was gonna make. Well, I'm vlogging. Hey, look at that. <laughs> I didn't clean the microwave. I can do that. I can move my kombucha to the fridge. It's done fermenting. Some of the work, solo staying late. Not I'm Probably not gonna get that done. Oh, you did school. Didn't work out. I am gonna finish some laundry, but basically my kitchen things have gone off. I, I made a vindaloo, a chicken vindaloo the other day. It was from a recipe that should be canned. So I wanted to try it out before I can some, and I have some beef thawed that I'm gonna make the guess beef what, Mom? vindaloo, which is I not traditional school. at all because Mom, guess why Indians, I school. a lot of Indians don't eat beef. You finished school, high five. Woo. Okay. All that to say, I have some beef ready. I have the spices all put together. Oh, you want a high five too? Okay, high five. Oh, nice. <laughs> I have the spices all put together so it'll be very easy to can it. I can exercise for you. You're gonna exercise for me? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My kitchen stuff's going out the window. I don't even have the brain focus after what happened today, all the things that happened today that I wasn't expecting. I should have expected that meeting this morning, but I wasn't <laughs> at all I had to do today. I just about to push us. That's the thing I, about, I love about yes. writing it all out. I was just telling Solo that uh, earlier because he was telling me he's overwhelmed with so much to do. I'm like, write it all out. Once you write it all out, you can see what you can let go of. <laughs> you can see what's the most important. And I always ask myself, what would make me the happiest if I got that done today? Yesterday, there was something I've been stuck on in my business, something I wanted to finish for Ever. I made myself finish it that day and I feel so good. So sometimes. I did eight push ups and 20 jumping jacks. Oh, it's like I did it. I wish it worked that way, by the way. Uh, anyways, it does help me when I see it all out there, like just be able to decide. I don't even write it in order, I just write it all down, get it all out of my brain. I think it takes away so much stress of worrying that I will forget about something important. When things come to me, I go write them down, then I know I'm not gonna forget something important. Also, there's so much satisfaction in checking things off or crossing them off. It just can't be beat. So even if you're not a list person, like I know I'm a visual, very visual person, but even if you're not, I think it does help to just write it all out and then determine what can be done. And then, when I come back to it tomorrow, I can easily see what needs to be done that I didn't get to yesterday, so I don't waste as much time in the morning getting going, because I got my list all going already. Tori's gonna make dinner tonight. She is so lovingly volunteered to help her mother out. Judah taught us how he makes his good spaghetti before he left town. What? I already gave you another piece of bread. You just are a bread guy today. I mean, so much bread. <laughs> We do have bread that I baked yesterday, so that's good. Um, Judah taught us his good spaghetti sauce that he makes, and so you're gonna make it. Fry the garlic and onions. Yeah, and then add the beef. The beef. And then we add a bunch of tomato sauce cans and the spices, Italian seasoning. And like the basil. Extra basil. Salt. Salt. Let me just see a good smile with that missing tooth. Oh, I love it. My brother-in-law is a chef in Kenya and he loves the red onions. He uses them often and his food is very good. I'm always thinking, what would Gotti do? His name is Godfrey, Gotti. Last time I was in Kenya, my brother-in-law made spaghetti sauce, or red sauce, with red onion. <laughs> And it was so good. He did tiny chopped vegetables and I tried to really pay attention to what he was doing because we loved it so much. The kids asked him to make it a second time and he did. And I have tried to duplicate it and I just cannot do it. I think some people are just have the natural ability and whatever they touch in the kitchen just turns to magic. And it's not me. But next time I'm there, I will take notes. Are you gonna be a cook? Yeah. Do you like to cook? Yes. Yes. Oh, you gonna try the onions? What do you think? Is that good? <laughs> she's mm. chewing it somewhere. She's gonna like You like that? Try offering her another. See what she does. No. <laughs> What's happening? This was a new batch of kombucha. The foam went up to like here. <laughs> 
So you're saying I did a very good job this time. Great job. <laughs> What's with the mustache? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to try this one, but I can't drink it this late or I'll be up all night. He likes to dr strain out the little scoby that forms in those bottles, the homemade. Wow, that's some good, strong, fizzy kombucha. Does it taste like black cherry? Oh wait, I don't know if you should be having a sip. Maybe in the morning. <laughs> Mom, here, this is more. Mm -hmm. So should I add the other? Yeah, at least two more. All right, Luca came home just long enough to take Micah and Tori to youth, and Noel is gonna be dropped off at a friend's house to play for the evening. You can take this to Dad. Solo's working late. Tonight, Should I bring a fork? and dad will pick you up oh. because those guys will come home late, so he'll pick you up probably. Should I bring a fork? He'll find a fork. <laughs> Luca has Judah's car for the next nine months, ten months. Luca, where are you going? It's still making that noise. I thought he got that fixed. Yeah, it started again like a week after they fixed it. Ah, uh, and then like every single other problem started again, too. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. Make sure there's no cat under there. You see a cat? I'm gonna wash my car. Water, <laughs> I wash <laughs> Let Judah say hear that. What did you say? I'm gonna wash what? I said I'm gonna wash my car again. My car? <laughs> <laughs> you get so annoyed whenever I call it my car. <laughs> Come on guys, back away from the car. I'm calling it my car even when he gets back just to annoy him. Yeah. <laughs> True brother brother style. Wow. Alright, I'm left without many children. Just Eli, hope, does Seth, peace. Whoa, it's so quiet in here. I um, mean, those of you who are concerned, I did buy Lucas ga a gas tank today. I told him, since you have to run all the way back here to pick up the kids, I'm buying your gas. We buy their gas tanks sometimes when they're running a lot of errands for us. <laughs> that's very helpful, and they appreciate it so much. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's good, though, for them to, you know, work, make money, and pay for things. It's a good intro into reality. I am hoping for a very boring homeschool day tomorrow. That is my hopes and dreams. I'm going to get these kids settled for the night and check on my baby chicks. Make sure they're doing good. They've been checked on several times today. So far so good, but I haven't seen them personally for a while. The crowd is gathering. It's that time of night. They know when I bring their food. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, who's a rooster and who's a hen? That's a real question. Solo's trying to teach me. <laughs> Some of them are kind of in between though. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I love the nightly run home. It's so fun. This one I thought was a hen, but now Solo told me it's a rooster. We're giving him away. You guys are gonna have food all over your backs if you keep standing under me. Ah! Aw, they're all sleeping under the lights. Nessa, stay out of here. Hi guys, you're so tiny. How are you? You still have food from earlier, huh? I think they'll do just fine tonight, but I'm gonna shut that little door to keep them safe. These guys have plenty of water out here, but I'm also giving them some soured milk that I don't need, a little clabbered milk. They love that too. Trying more piles to see if anything's better than the last. See him drinking that milk there? So we close the coop up and electrify it at night just to keep them safe from predators, but I don't close their doors except for the little chick store because I want them to feel free to come and go and it's not too cold right now or anything. So that'll change in the winter. I'm not even sure how everything's gonna change in the winter, but just taking it one day at a time right now. Then we make the batch of food. Chickens are really easy. You just have to show up and do the thing. And we're used to that with kids anyway. So I made new food here. I moved that previous batch down to here, that batch down to here. This is the batch I had fed them. And we fill this with water. And that's how we ferment the food over three days. So every day we move it down. Next up is kittens. Come on guys, here kitty kitty. Let's go. Axel, Rick, come on, let's go. We moved our kittens out to a dog house that we had in the front, the previous owners used it for their dog. Right now there's a couple mattresses in it <laughs> that are going to the trash, but the cats can fit through, but Nessa cannot. So we put their food and water in here and hopefully it works for the winter. We had them in our garage and uh, it was starting to stink like cat and we didn't want that. 
But we have these great dog houses. There's bedding in there. And then this one's kind of covered. And there's a heat element in there that the previous owners used with their aging dog. And so we can actually heat it. You can see that cord there. We can heat it in the winter. So hopefully it works out for them and it's comfortable. They eat here and drink their water. But so far every night they sleep on our deck, which they did when they were in the garage anyway. <laughs> a lot of times. On our deck or our front porch. There you go, you heard me. I do like that, that this is a safe place that the dog can't get them when they want to be alone without her. And I feed them at night too. Hopefully to encourage them to catch mice during the day. Finally, it's time for me to put the children to bed. If I made it sound like chickens are just like children, it's not true. The children is the hardest part, but they're also the best part. And it's beautiful out here and they're not gonna wanna go to bed.